Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. I've decided to do my next installment of socks today. Um, I will be showing you my March socks. I have three pairs of them, which is crazy because they were so much fun. I wanted to make three pairs. Um, it is April and yesterday the pollen count in Baltimore was I don't know, like it's normally like 400, whatever the measurement is, the number is 400. And yesterday it was like 1100 and I thought I was dying. I thought I had COVID, took PCR, took a rapid test, took another rapid test this morning. Oh my gosh. So I didn't have COVID. I just have, I might have a cold. I think it's allergies. It's so bad. Um, I take a Claritin. I mean, I take the like off-brand CDS, non-drowsy Claritin. If you, um, don't know that you can get Claritin. It's the same thing. It's called Loratadine. Um, you can get that at CVS, like at CVS non-drowsy antihistamines for like a third, a third of the price of Claritin. Um, everyone should know that. I have to take those all the time because I'm allergic to everything like animals and dust and weather and stuff. Um, if even if like there's a week when I don't think I'm gonna be coming into contact with anything I'm allergic to. If I stop taking them, I'll just get hives all over my hands, <laughs> which is no fun. But yeah, today I'm wearing my festive doodle. This is, uh, it's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. And in the actual pattern, it has long sleeves. Um, I was gonna do a long sleeved, but what, I don't know, I think it was the yarn I chose. So I chose this yarn. This is a BFL high twist yarn. Um, it's four ply fingering weight and I got it bare and I dyed it. It's all of the, all of it is that except this dark blue, which is Nipix palette. Um, but the green, the light blue and the purple are all hand dyed by me. Um, like 100% blue face luster high twist. Um, that is a sock yarn. <laughs> I have used it as a sock yarn. It works great. Um, it's really, really high twist and it's thin. So it's actually really hard to get a gauge for like a loose fingering weight, which I think the gauge for this was like 24 stitches over four inches. It came out too small. It's, I just made it into a crop top. Like that's the bottom, you can see that. Um, I don't even wear it that much, but you know, it's hot in Baltimore. Maybe I'll wear it this summer, I don't know. I'm not really, really a crop top person, but I have some high-waisted shorts, so maybe I'll wear it with that. Anyway, um, it's really warm here. It, it's been like in the 80s this week. Um, in Celsius, that's like the high 20s, low 30s. Um, and I, I like, I don't know why I'm calling them my March socks. It's just the next pair of socks. For me, my per personal challenge is that I have to make all the socks within 2022. So this is the pair that I um, did for March, a design for March. Um, so what I do with these is that the challenge is, if you haven't seen these videos before, the challenge is that I pick a Jane Austen character um, that I assign to the skein of hand dyed yarn that I picked for that month. And then um, I design a pair of socks around that character or yarn and whatever the combination of the character and the yarn. Um, and the way that I did it, the challenge was, or the reason I did the challenge was because I wanted to use up my hand dyed yarn. Um, that's just like sitting in my basement. And I was like, okay, you'll use 13 skeins of this because it's 12 plus one, there's a bonus. Like I said, you'll use 13 skeins of this at least um, if you just make 13 pairs of socks, make a pair of socks every month with it. So like last year I got the, um, it was a box. It was like the far Farmer's Daughter Fibers um, sock squad. Every month I would get a skein and the bases were like alternating between 75, 25, uh, 80, 20, and then the yak blend, which is like 20% yak, 10% nylon, and 70% merino. It's really soft and it's really warm. Um, I have bought that base to dye before because I like it so much. Um, yeah, so those are the, um, that was that. And I did that. I didn't keep up with it every single month, but I kept up with it almost every month, which was exciting. So I was like, well, this was expensive. I mean, it wasn't that expensive. It's like maybe 20, seven dollars a month including shipping but i was like i have more than 13 skeins of sock yarn in the basement that i dyed so why don't i just 
do that. And so I also made my mom one because I had like doubles of most of them. So I made my mom like a open this on May 1st, open this on September 1st, you know, like one for every month of the year for sock yarn. And it's really, that was her Christmas present. It was exciting. So this was my March colorway. Sorry, I haven't trimmed the ends of this. So some of them have minis. This one had two minis that I dyed with it. Um, these are the Catherine Moreland socks. Catherine Moreland is the main character from Jane Austen's novel Northanger Abbey, which is so funny. If you've never read Northanger Abbey and you like Jane Austen, I recommend it. It's really funny. It's just like, it's, it's about this girl who's named Catherine who's like, really into reading like she's a real big reader and she gets like really freaked out by like real life things that like she builds up in her imagination to be like gothic novel type situations and it's really funny <laughs> it's not super long um it's just it's yeah there's um when i asked my college roommate i may have said this in my last video uh her name's lexi when i asked lexi i was like lexi who's your favorite jane austen character which socks do you want she was like, Isabella from Northanger Abbey. And I was like, I'm just doing Isabella from Northanger Abbey. Like, she's a minor character. She just, maybe next year. Um, but Lexi was like, she's the best. She's so horrible. And I was like, yeah, she's horrible. Um, she's, she's one of Catherine's, like, friends who's, like, kind of sucks. So, because I had two 10 gram minis, I could have done blue, 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 green, green, green. But instead, I mixed them up. So I did blue cuff and toe, green heel, green cuff and toe, blue heel. This is what they look like. This is a pair that fits me. I realize that I'm doing all of these, like the, the monthly ones that I do for um, the yarn that I dyed, I'm making them all my own size. I'm taking them off the blockers because, oh, excuse me. These are a large size blocker, so that's why they didn't like fit properly. I have two pairs of blockers and the medium ones are just like not really big enough for socks for me which is annoying and then the large ones are a little too big i'm just gonna tuck in the ends so i thought that this okay so Catherine, she loves fantasy she loves like all that kind of thing she's hilarious she i just thought like okay Catherine's a big reader they've been on the blockers for like a month so they don't smell like wool wash anymore um she's a big reader she's funny but she's, she's got an active imagination. So I didn't want to do a complicated pattern for Catherine because she, um, you know, she, she gets lost in her mind a lot. And so I thought, okay, let, like, let's do something that's simple that, could, that can look good in a variety of, like, um, of yarns. And so the idea behind this was that um, this pattern, which is a, just a pattern of knits and pearls, it looks a little different in every iteration of yarn, which is cool. It's a good way to show off variegated yarn because the pearl, it's just knits and pearls. It'll make a variegated yarn look even more variegated. And I'll show you an example of my second pair. Um, you can knit it in a solid color and it's like very gender neutral if that's what you're going for. Um, if you're looking to make somebody a sock who doesn't want crazy yarn, oh, that got a little snagged. That's fine, that happens. Let's show you this side. So this is, um, this is a base from Dyer Supplier called Platinum Sock, and it is 75% merino and 25% nylon. However, it is not four plies. Like if you think of 75-25 sock yarn, it's like super thin, it's super smooth. This is not that base. It is thinner because it has a higher yardage than 80-20, but it's constructed just like a traditional 80-20 sock yarn, which is two plies. Um, I really like it. It actually makes socks like because they're a little thinner sometimes if you're wearing boots or something they'd fit better um yeah it's just like i don't know it's comfortable it's not too thick um but it's like it kind of has the spring of the 80 20 yarn which a lot of people really like that's my favorite part about 80 20 yarn is that it's really springy 75 25 yarn is not as springy like it doesn't you know it's not as comfortable to knit with it's thinner whatever um, I like that about 8020. I think that makes it just like a better, I don't know, it's better on my hands. But you still have a ton of yarn left over if it's 7525. Um, if you do heels, toes, and cuffs, I find that I generally, if I'm using especially 7525, I only use about half the skein. 
for the body of two socks if I'm using another color for heels, toes, and cuts, like I said. Especially, yeah, with 7525, you can definitely get away with using about half the skein. These are a little longer though. I did 12 rounds of two by two rib. I usually do 15. And I just thought Catherine would be impatient. And then I, I did 80 rounds of leg instead of, I usually do like 60, 65, um, depending on the repeat. I like to end the repeat before I start the heel just so I know where I'm gonna start it up again after the heel. Um, I do a heel flop and gusset. I always know my socks from the uh, cuff down. But this pair would be really easy to do toe up. It would look exactly the same. The stitch pattern would look exactly the same because it's just knits and pearls. So yeah, I'm gonna show you another couple pairs. Um, just so you know, uh, I have a test knitting form. If you wanna knit these, it's been a little confusing for the first two months. Um, the patterns haven't come out yet. They're the first three. So this is the third of the first three. They're all gonna come out together probably in June. Um, so if you want to test knit, people are always asking me, what's the deadline? And I'm like, there's no deadline. Like, if you want to be a test knitter, I'm not going to police anything. There's a Ravelry group. You can share your progress photos or your finished photos with each other. You can talk about yarn choices. You can tell me if there's any problems with the pattern. Like, whatever it is, it's not, this is not a formal test knit. Like, if you want to do it, you can have the pattern. Um, but it's not a, it's not a nice pattern. I mean, it will be when it's when it's done, like I'm gonna lay it out properly. But right now it's like a Word document. Um, I have had some it folks with issues with charts um, because I chart out all my lace um, and I don't type it in, um, I don't type it up. I will have it like in the pattern when I release the pattern, all of those things will be taken care of. Like the lace, there will be like written instructions for the lace. This one's easy, it's texture pattern. I will give you a chart if you want it because sometimes people just like need to see a chart and they're like, okay, I got that. Because this is really simple. I will also provide written instructions for these in the test knitter pattern, um, like written instructions for the, the texture. It's super simple. Um, but yes, you can fill out the form. It's below this in the box. Um, it'll say March socks. It'll give me your information in a spreadsheet. I will ask you in the spread, in the, in the form, do you want to be on the list for all of the Jane Austen socks? You don't have to knit all of them if you don't want, um, but most people say yes. I've only had a couple of people say no, so you'll, you don't have to fill it out again if you say yes, like you'll just get it. Now I have one Google form um, that I'm just changing the, t the name of every month, and so if you want to get in on that, you'll get in on the action wherever it starts. <laughs> um, and I'm going to release these patterns over like two years. So like I said, I'm knitting them all this year, but I'm, because of test knitting, like it doesn't, I don't wanna make everyone test knit a pair of socks every month. Like that's really short. People have lives, people have other knitting projects. Um, but yeah, this is like an appropriate um, pattern for like super variegated yarn. I would love to try this in self-striping. I'm gonna show you my next pair, which is striped. I did this with DK. Well, I didn't, I did it with fingering weight held double, but it's striped. Um, I just was looking for a project for Scrappy Sunday a couple months ago. And I thought I would do this. And this is like, it looks really Christmassy, but this is pink and yellow <laughs> and then it's green. Um, I just went through my scrap thing and grabbed all the greens. And I know that I need to do approximately 60 rows or rounds after the, like once I start the gusset, it's about 60 to 65 rounds of foot. So I knew I could do four stripes if I did 16 rounds each of the pattern and per stripe so that's what i did 16 16 16 so there's 48 rows of leg after um is it 12 one two oh it's 10 10 rows of two by two rib because this is dk 48 rows of leg 64 rows of foot got seven stripes um because some of them are so similar, like this one is so similar to this one, and they're both kind of similar to this one. I didn't do it in like an, any kind of fade or ombre. I just kind of randomly chose these. The they're all scraps. Like I hand dyed all of them except these two, the teal and then this like kind of celery green. Those were um, Farmer's Daughter Sock Squad. Those are the yak base. This green is the same green as this. It's from the same skein. Um, 
I, I always like, people are always like, what do you do with your minis? Like, don't you, do you label them? I'm like, no, nah, I just remember. I remember what's, uh, what everything is. Maybe in like 10 years, if I still have a lot of mini skeins from like this time in my life, I'll be like, I don't know what that is. But usually I, I can just touch it and be like, oh, that's this base. And I made it at X time where I bought it in X place. And I used it for X project. So yeah, my um, socks will include instructions for this DK weight. It's only gonna come in one size. Regular socks come in small, medium, large. So 56 stitches, 64 stitches, and 72 stitches. If you are somewhat new to knitting socks, um, I would knit 64 stitches if you are a medium size and have like a woman's seven and a half regular feet. Um, I would go with small only if you have super narrow ankles or feet or if you're gonna be using like a sport weight yarn. Um, and large if you have um, larger feet, wide feet. Maybe you're knitting for your uh, friend who's a dude or you just have bigger feet um, or like wider ankles, normal, knit 72. Um, you can even go up to 80 if you want. Um, it is not super hard to modify to 80 stitches. Um, basically adding eight is what you do because the pattern is, or you could even add four if you wanted to do like 68 stitches to this because this is a four stitch chart um, or pattern. Yeah, these ones are really fun and thick. Um, my roommate's boyfriend said that um, he thought these looked like fish scales when they were striped. So yeah, these I just banged out like one in a Sunday and then one the next Sunday. I made them, I was knitting these during the Super Bowl. Yeah, so basically I, I knit like, I always knit ahead. So like a few months before I'm knitting the sock for that month. But then the when the month starts, I cast on that sock in my hand eyed yarn. So like these, I couldn't start till March. Um, but I'd done these, this pair and the first pair before that. So this was the first pair I did. I actually started these like way back in January. This is the second pair of socks I knit for the challenge. So this is a Christmas colorway called Christmas Crack by the Farmer's Daughter Fibers from Sock Squad. Um, and it is uh, super crazy and variegated. And you can see that, so you can see what happens in stocking it. It's pretty variegated and crazy. It gets even crazier when you add the pearls into it because the pearls just kind of like toss the variegated yarn around enough that because it's alternating with knit stitches that it just looks even even more insane and I love it. So if you're looking for something to do with a really variegated skein of sock yarn, um, this is kind of fun. Like any any kind of pattern with pearls. Um, again, like obviously you can test knit these or you can knit these if you're watching this in several months and the pattern's already released. Um, but, or like any kind of textured socks are your best friend, like Hermione's Everyday Socks. Those are actually the most popular pattern on Ravelry. <laughs> like those are the most knit pattern. There's like 35,000 pairs of Hermione's Everyday Socks on Ravelry. Um, it's also, that's also a simple pattern of just knits and pearls. Um, do something with knits and pearls. Do like, maybe Summer Lee has, um, the Hello Sailor sock set. She's got the broken rope socks, which is just kind of this like broken rib type of pattern. It's really um, simple. Or she also has the scattered pearls socks, which is kind of like the Hermione's Everyday socks, except the pearls are scattered a little bit more widely. Like there's, they're not so close together. Um, but yeah, I always encourage you to buy patterns from other designers too. This is, I'm super good at self-promotion, obviously. Um, but anything, if you've got variegated yarn, anything with pearls in it will kind of highlight that variegation and not make it look like, not let the pattern get lost in the, in the shuffle. Because it like lets, if you're doing a lace pattern, like, um, I have my whole bag of socks here, so I'm just going to get some out. This is, you know, Jane Bennett socks from January. That pattern, this is variegated, but like it's tonal. It's not like variegated, variegated. It's just tonal. So you can still see the lace pattern here, but if you did this pattern with this yarn, it'd look crazy. You would not see that lace pattern at all. And so to see the lace, you need, you know, a, a, a yarn that's that's not so crazy. Um, 
a yarn that's either solid or, or tonal or something, especially in a light color. Whereas if you have a textured sock, the pattern's a little more versatile for different types of, of sock knitting or yeah, different types of patterns. For instance, obviously this one is textured. So yeah, one of my goals this year was even though I'm basing all of these patterns on women and female characters, um, I still think it's important to have some patterns that are, you know, versatile like this. And um, that will, you know, that can kind of lend themselves to multiple types of sock, you know, um, yarns. So like, again, if you want these to be really plain, they can be really plain, just knit them in a solid color. Um, or maybe just solid color with contrast heels and toes if you're looking for a little bit of fun. If you've got a variegated skin, this works too. If you've got self-striping, um, like for instance, these are, this is not self-striping, but if you knit like a sock with Knit Picks Felici or something, it would it would look kind of like this in terms of the stripes. Maybe I'll knit a pair of these in Knit Picks Felici. Um, I have a bunch of that. My roommate and I really like knitting self-striping socks. So sometimes we get like the bag of Felici, like the value pack. It's tense, all tens gains, like all ten new colors of Felici. Um, and we split them, we like each, we like pick, I'll pick one, she'll pick one, I'll pick one, she'll pick one. Um, and we each get five. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Knit Picks Felici is a 50 gram sock skein. It's of self-striping yarn. So if you want to knit longer socks, like fully self-striping, you need to get two balls. Um, but we always are, just like oh we can do this in one ball <laughs> um we just because we have this big huge bag of sock scraps it's like oh we can just do he contrast heels toes and cuffs so no problem um so if you're wondering i might do a video on this but you can like this pair of socks is knit with one ball of felici total i just use knit pick stroll in black did afterthought heels heels toes and cuffs no problem one ball this is colorway vampire vibes um I'll do another video on my Felici socks because you can see the different types of heels I've done, toe up versus um, cuff down, what it looks like if it's held with a white yarn, um, that kind of thing. But yeah, the um, I just thought, I mean, I recommend people knit socks with any kind of yarn that they want. So like I've had some test knitters be like, Oh yeah, like I have a skein of self-striping, but I would never use it on your lace socks. And I'm like, you can use that on my lace socks if you want. These are your socks. I mean, it's my pattern, but like, it's, they're gonna be your socks. Do what you want. Knit with the yarn you want to knit with. This would be perfect for any of that if you are a little wary to do that with lace. I have had test knitters knit my Jane and Kitty socks with um, self-striping though, and variegated, and they look great. They do. So do what you want. Um, wear this, knit the socks that you want to wear or that you think your recipient might want to wear. Um, so yeah, this pattern will include small, medium, large, and DK, which is 48 stitches. So if you want to modify the stitch count, no problem. If you want to test it for me, like all I ask, the only thing I want you to do is follow the, the actual, like pattern, pattern, like the, te the, the, it's not necessarily going to be charted. I mean, it will be charted, but like the charted pattern, the texture or lace. Um, I don't care how you construct the sock. You can knit toe up. You can knit cuff down. You can knit any kind of heel you want. You can knit tube socks with no heel if you want. You can knit a contrasting heel toe and cuff. You can knit the whole sock in one color. You can knit um, as crazy as you want. You can knit them as long or short as you want. They're your socks. Um, I just think it's nice that like when if a pattern gets released on Ravelry, you know, first of all, I want folks to tell me if there's like massive errors in the pattern, but also when a pattern gets released on Ravelry, it's nice when the person who's browsing patterns can like click through and see like 25 projects um, and they can see that sock in like other yarns and other, um, other colors and other types of yarn and other construction methods and like all that kind of thing, just to be like, oh, cause you know, a lot of times knitters browsing Ravelry are not necessarily confident in like, you know, yarn substitution or, um, you know, modifying patterns. And so seeing that other people do that in their Ravelry notes is really nice. And they can kind of oftentimes, that, um, you know, it helps them kind of have the, you know, 
ideas to do that themselves. Um, just say, you know, these socks are for you. They're not, I mean, they're, I have mine. My preferred method of knitting socks is from the cuff down with a heel flap and gusset and a wedge toe where you decrease on either side, every other row. You can do a round toe. You can do an afterthought heel. You can do a shadow wrap heel. You can do a short row heel. You can do a flegal heel if you're knitting, uh, you know, a bottom from the toe up. You can do fish lips kiss heel. Um, lots of people like that one, but you have to pay a dollar to get the fish lips kiss heel pattern. Um, but lots of people use it for all their socks. So, um, so yeah, check that out if you're interested. I recommend if you're a newer sock knitter, trying out multiple types of heels to see what fits you best. I like the heel flap and gusset. I think it fits best. But if I'm doing self-striping, no problem after that heel. Or a shadow wrap. Sometimes I do a shadow wrap. Um, if you're interested in the shadow wrap heel and afterthought heels, I will link tutorials um, to both of those. The Kirby Warby afterthought heel is great. Um, you can also do a forethought heel where you put in the waist yarn where you know you're going to do your heel. Um, and then you have fewer ends to weave in because you're just going to go back over the... You're going to slip those stitches, it's complicated, back onto the needle and then continue knitting with the same color and not cut your main color of yarn ever. Whereas with an afterthought heel, you actually have to like find the row, bring up a strand of yarn from the middle and cut it and unravel um, to then knit the heel in another with a different yarn. It could be from the same skein, but it's not like continuous. Um, yeah, I would recommend do your research, try out many types of heels. I like the heel flap and gusset, although it's been a journey to like figure out how to do it without getting holes on the side of the flap. Um, I've changed my technique several times. I started twisting the stitches after a while, realized that was helping, and then now I actually pick up both legs of those sti those stitches on the side of the flap and I twist the stitches. And I think that's the best, because if one of them snaps, you've got another strand there keeping it on. I've never blown through a heel, but like, I'm weary about other people and I'm conscious of, the reason I've never blown through a heel is because I don't, I have so many pairs of socks that I rotate them constantly. So I've never like worn a pair out. I also don't really wear them in my shoes outside. I tend to wear them only in my house with slippers or without any shoes. So, well. Um, I'm trying to think what else do I need to say? I don't know. Yeah, these are my March socks. <laughs> if you wanna test knit them, fill out the form. Oh, I guess one thing that I wanted to say is that I think I might do some Q&A videos like once in a while. Um, people ask me questions in the comments all the time. So I'm gonna go through the comments of like my most recent videos, maybe all my videos and just write down the questions and try and start answering them like maybe in a separate Q&A video. Um, and if, I'm gonna put a Google form also like what Andrea Mowry does in her I'll Knit If I Want To videos. I'll put like a Google form for if you want to ask a question. Um, I'm only going to answer questions that are that are like appropriate for YouTube. You can ask me personal questions if you want, um, but like I'm not going to answer like really out there questions, <laughs> um, just so you know. And then, um, and then yeah, I'll, I'll try and answer them. So please note that if you say, can I see a tutorial on this, that may come someday, um, or I'll share a tutorial from somebody else on YouTube, um, but I won't just like stop. And if it's complicated, I'm not just gonna like stop in the middle of the video and show you a complicated tutorial on something. Um, so yeah, but if you want any, if you have questions about knitting, yarn, patterns, anything, um, Bear Isle socks, whatever, sweaters, etc. me, um, as long as they're nice questions, uh, you're welcome to ask them in the form below. Um, well, this has been a nice short video compared to my recent ones. I've been like rambling for almost an hour for a lot of these recently. So this one's nice and short. I'm gonna have to take a, I haven't decided, sometimes now I go on Canva and I like take a screenshot from the video and I go on Canva and I like make a whole like, title page for my videos um but I don't know yeah maybe I'll just take a picture of the three pairs of socks all together and I'll just like insert that as the 
you know, as the, the thumbnail or whatever. But yeah, here's my socks. March socks, Catherine Moreland. <laughs> my dad thinks Catherine Moreland is really funny. Um, there's this one scene in the book where she like goes off on like a search of like something crazy in somebody else's house and the her like friend who owns the house, um, I think it's the love interest, whatever his name is. Um, he, uh, he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I, I swear to God, your father is trapped up here or something. And he's like, fam, this is England. Like, this is not like Transylvania or like anything. Like, and, but my dad just loves the way he says, this is England. <laughs> Catherine, this is England. Like, no, that doesn't happen here. It's really funny. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye.